an integral uh, of a rational function. Uh, we have a top polynomial of degree 2, bottom polynomial of degree 3. And we're going to split it up into partial fractions. Now, in this case, the setup work was done for you. It's already factored. It's already split up into the partial fractions. But we're asked to figure out what is a plus 2b minus c. <coughs> so what we need to do first is just figure out a, b, and c, then do that algebra. So in doing partial fractions, remember that when you have it set up like this, these three terms added together are equal to the entire fraction. So you're kind of always working in reverse. Like if I had three fractions that had each one of those terms as the denominator, <coughs> if I got a common denominator, it would be all three of those things. And then if I added those three together, I should end up with whatever's up here. So you're, good, you're basically doing that process when you do partial fractions. So in getting a common denominator of these three terms, what would we need to do? Well, each letter is going to have to be multiplied by the other factors that it's not already over. So <clears throat> we know that we would have a times x plus 1 times x minus 2. We would have b times x minus 3, x minus 2. And we would have c times x minus 3, x plus 1. And all of this has to equal the numerator up there. So now to solve for these things, uh, let me write that over here, equals 3x squared minus 8x plus 1. <clears throat> so to solve for these, in this case, the easiest way to do this is going to be choosing x's that make each other, all, all the other terms zero. So the reason that we want to do that and not the other method, <clears throat> which will come up in the next problem, is because each one of these factors is in this uh, expression twice. So x minus 2 is here and here, but not here. x minus 3 is here and here, but not here, etc. So that means if we choose a number that makes one of those zero, we're only going to get one letter left, and we'll be, we'll be able to solve for each letter individually, which is exactly what we want. So let's just do the first one here that will leave us with a, which is if we choose x equals 3. So if we choose x equals 3 and plug that in, this term is going to be 0, and this term is going to be 0. If we plug in 3 here, we're going to get 4 times 1. So we get 4a, 0, and 0. <clears throat> if we plug in 3 to this, let's see what we get. <clears throat> so we would have 27 minus 24 plus 1, which is 4. <clears throat> so we know then that a is 1. So we're going to do something similar for the next two as well. So Let's choose the number for x that would give us b by itself. So we want x, in this case, to be negative 1, because that will get a and c both to go to 0. <clears throat> so this term is 0. If we plug in negative 1 here, we're going to get negative 4 times negative 3, so we're going to get 12b. And if we plug in negative 1 over here, so what we're going to get there is 3 plus 8 plus 1, which is 12. 12b equals 12. That tells us that b equals 1. So last one for c. So we're going to choose the number that gets makes the other term 0 but not c, so that would be x equals 2, because those both would be 0 then. So if we choose x equals 2, this is 0, this is 0, so 2 minus 3, we get negative 1 times 3, so we get negative 3c, and if we plug in 2 to what our numerator is supposed to be, so here we're going to get, <coughs> excuse me, so 2 squared, 4 times 3 is 12, um, we're going to get 12 minus 16, which is negative 4, plus 1, negative 3. So again, c equals 1, because the numbers are the same. 
So we got that all these numerators should just be 1. A, B, and C should all be 1. So remember, the question here, though, was actually, what is A plus 2B minus C? So we just have 1 plus 2 minus 1, which would equal 2. So in these types, in this type problem, the partial fractions was already set up for you. But in this case, and I mean, you should always be looking out for this. If you have multiple factors such that, you know, each letter that you're trying to solve for has different factors, usually pu plugging in numbers that turn the other ones into zero is going to be the easiest way to do those partial fractions questions.